October 2005, some friends and I set out on a journey to search for some adventure and a little insight into cultures very different to our own. The setting for this adventure, South America and the Andean mountain range, where volcanoes rise above the clouds and powerful rivers cut their way through a dense jungle. We set our sights on Ecuador with a plan to explore this thick rainforest region through its natural highways, the many rivers of the upper Amazon basin. We have a core team of three, Brian McGee from Colorado, Rob Murphy from Dublin and myself. We've flown to Ecuador with whitewater kayaks and we've hired a local driver to take us to the river's more accessible points. After that though, we're on our own. The aim is to explore different sections of the river each day and hopefully hook up with our driver again each evening. Well, we weren't quite sure what to expect before we came here. I think we just found out some big rapids with a really, really dense jungle on either side, which means that if we don't run the rapid, we're hiking through the jungle. And, uh, There's a lot of things that are special about, about rivers um, for a lot of regions and a lot of people. They're the lifeblood of the, of the area, the only transportation artery. And where the gradient is very steep or where the jungle is very dense, a whitewater kayak is pretty much the only way you can, you can discover those places. So for me, a river isn't just a playground for a sport, but um, it's really a way to explore a, a whole region and a whole culture. Okay. Hola. 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 ¿Qué tal? Bien. 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 First night in the jungle, rained a little bit last night, bugs crawling everywhere, I'm sure glad I was in a tent. We had become used to scores of insect bites, but just one month into our trip, it became clear that I had been bitten by something that leaves slightly more than just an itch. A couple days has gone by now, and we admitted Colin to the hospital. I'm with high fever, chills, muscle cramps. Um, the doctors think he might either have malaria, typhoid, dengue fever, or possibly a relapse of leptospirosis. <coughs> malaria was the final verdict, but the episode cost me seven days in hospital and a further two weeks till I was strong enough to get back in the river.
right, so uh, we've just tried to come uh, from Quito to Baeza, another town that we're going to go kayaking in. And uh, our bus has been held up for a couple hours at a police yeah. checkpoint. And apparently there's been a lot of rioting going on. Rocks and boulders rolled into the road, burning tires. There was guys there with petrol bombs just waiting, hanging around. A big crowd of people has just made their way up towards Baeza. And who knows what's going to happen when it gets dark. We decided to push on through the police line and try to find somewhere to stay in Baeza. Okay, so we've managed to uh, get past the police line. We're now on the side of the rioters here in Baeza. Um, unfortunately, we've been tear gassed a couple of times from up the hill and from down the hill here. And we're just waiting to see what's going to happen next. The riots have been sparked by the arrest of Ecuador's ex-president, a favourite of the local people who had recently returned from exile. By morning, all was calm, and we could resume our quest for whitewater thrills. However, the episode had awakened us to the fact that we knew little of the lives of those who lived here, and we decided to change our focus for a while. I've always wondered what it must be like to live in a rainforest community so now we're going to try and find out. We're here in northwest Ecuador in a place called Borbon. It's our launching point to get onto the Rio Kaya Pass and head upriver now tomorrow to meet with the Chachi people, an indigenous community that live in the San Miguel rainforest. This was our change of focus, a trip up the Rio Kaya Pass on what felt like some sort of journey back in time. We had changed our modern kayaks for traditional canoes and we now headed against the flow instead of with it. The plan was to push as far upriver as we could and spend some time with the people who lived in the thick Choco rainforest. We were looking to get a broader picture of the country we were travelling through and to find out if life by the river was really as utopian as it seemed. Our first stop is the tiny village of Loma Linda, where the indigenous Chachi people have lived for centuries. The show has been put together for our benefit. Nonetheless, it seems that these people retain many of their traditional skills, most notably a great knowledge of and affinity with the wildlife of the forest. We put something in here. The forest and river have always provided for the Chachi and have enabled them to live isolated from Western civilization for most of their history. Now though, there is some use of manufactured products which require hard currency to procure. With no history of a cash economy, local communities are easy prey for international logging companies, offering once-off cash payments for clear-cutting rights to the land. An alternative does exist in the form of sustainable eco-tourism, but the returns are much less immediate. The Chachi are at a crucial crossroads in their history as they decide which direction they take to see them through the tricky transition from indigenous culture to global economy. Further upstream, on the opposite riverbank, we arrive at the community of San Miguel. In the 1600s, several ships carrying slaves from Africa to North America were wrecked off the Esmeraldas coast. Those who survived fled into the jungle and are represented today by the Afro-Ecuadorian communities of the Cayapas River. In the 
ancestors of these people first fled their captors, it was the forest that provided them with refuge and food. It seems unthinkable now, but in a few short years of intense logging, this remote region could be a network of dirt roads, decimated forest, and polluted water. <laughs> <laughs> the Afro-Ecuadorian community stand side by side with their Chachi neighbours as they face an uncertain future together, united by their two great providers, the lush forest and the gently flowing waters of the Kaya Pass. We decided to push further upriver onto the Rio Bravo or River of the Brave, named after the powerful rapids that raged during the rainy season and the fierce Chachi tribes that once lived here. The evening. This was our chance to experience life as it has been for centuries, living a sustainable existence within a forest and river ecosystem. This difference between us and the locals is perhaps best demonstrated by McGee's love for fly fishing. You just think about big fish and you don't think about anything else. Local fishermen use this plant for line and insects for bait. They find Brian's setup a little strange. These flies. Go see them. Yeah, There's the classic, the classic cultures right there, <laughs> <laughs> Ah, muy bien. We came here in search of a greater insight into the lives of those who depend on the rivers that we use for leisure. These people are only here because of the river and it's on the river that we find our common ground. Moving downstream again, our trip to the Rio Bravo is drawing to a close, and we find ourselves in more familiar territory, picking our way down rapids. Travels in South America continue, moving south along the Andes, exploring endless miles of white water and pushing some limits within ourselves. However, it's the images of the rainforest that remain etched in our memories as we wonder if they can find a sustainable solution to the quest for higher standards of material living that a change over to modern cash economy can achieve. What's more, we wonder what will remain of their surroundings once that changeover is complete. <laughs> 